has set its price under this auction for offshore wind too low. Um, and like you said, supply chain in supply chain inflation in offshore wind is running about 40% by some reports. Um, and the prices that the government have set just don't reflect this. So there's no real benefit for the investors to take part in the scheme. So there hasn't been any bids. And that what what do you think the consequence of that? There's been plenty of criticism. Uh, Labour Party, uh, the opposition party here uh, in the UK saying this is a missed opportunity and devastating. What do you make of it? Yeah, there's three real consequences. And, and the first one that lots of people at home will be wondering about is bills. Um, obviously, cost of living crisis, gas bills are through the roof, so electricity bills. Um, and offshore wind is one of the cheapest sources of power today. It's cheaper than gas. Um, and gas is predicted to stay high for the foreseeable future. So really what we've got today is a situation where we haven't secured any offshore wind, which means that we're going to have to buy in more expensive gas um, and therefore our bills are going to be higher. Um, we calculate in the region of about a billion pounds a year higher, um, which per household is only about you know a few tens of pounds. But as the years go by, that's going to add up. Um, so the first is on our consumer bills. The second is on our energy security, um, which has been a favourite topic of politicians over the past year or so during the war. Obviously, gas supplies have been under threat. Um, and really anything that we can do now to ensure that we don't need as much gas can only help with our energy security. And, and therefore, offshore wind would have helped with that, but we haven't got any. Um, and the third, of course, is climate change, which has remained a top concern for the British public, even through COVID and the cost of living crisis is up there among the top concerns and having no offshore wind means we need to use more fossil fuels. So three pretty significant reasons why many will be pretty upset. Can you just explain what this reverse auction is in the simplest terms? What is this process? Sure, it is a bit technical, so I'll try my best. So basically, uh, the government sets a price. Um, for different technologies, including offshore wind, onshore wind, solar, all of those sorts of renewables. Um, and if the wholesale power price, which is what you pay at market, which is why our bills have been so high over the last year is because of the wholesale price. And um, basically, if the wholesale price is above that set price by government, set by government, um, the renewables generators, the people who build the wind farms actually pay back that money. And um, so what we've seen is because power prices have been so high, they've been paying back and renewables have directly saved us some money on our bills. Now, you won't see that on your bill because it's factored into the wholesale price, which is why uh, you won't know about this, probably. Um, but on, in the other, on the other hand, if the wholesale power price is below the set price that the government agrees, um, then the renewables generators get the subsidy. But over the past year or so, that's not been the case for offshore wind because power has been so expensive. I see. Jess Rolston, thank you so much for explaining that to us. Thank you.